Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the Good morning and welcome everybody to uh, this special uh, service. So wherever you're uh, well, uh, coming to us today, uh, if you're sitting in your lounge room, your living room, uh, I just uh, really pray that you are blessed as we come into worship. You might notice I've got my palm branch. I invited everybody last week to make sure you've got your palm branches. So if you've got yours, uh, get it ready. Uh, we're going to need it in a moment for singing along. But you've noticed as we come to worship that our candle is already lit. And uh, our psalm for today actually reminds us that the Lord is God and he has made his light to shine on us. The light of the world brings light to those in darkness. It is a light which no darkness can quench. In our dark and troubled days, we light the candle to symbolise the light of Christ, which eternally shines and brings hope. Let us live in that hope. So let us come into worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Happy Palm Sunday to you. Let us come and worship. And I invite you to sing along with our first song this morning, which is Hosanna. in Christ during the last uh, five weeks we have been traveling with Jesus to this point when he enters Jerusalem with his disciples and others we too cast our palms and cloaks before Christ but we know that as we rejoice we must follow Jesus to the cross and to his resurrection so let us come in prayer as we bring our prayers of confession as we remember that we have sometimes shied away from uh, Christ's call for us to take up our own cross to follow him on that difficult journey. Let us pray. Lord in the silence we do reflect on the times 
that uh, we have not travelled with you. We've shunned the journey perhaps that lies before us. But Lord, uh, as we make this final painful journey from, from the joy of Palm Sunday to reliving your passion, your death, your, your crucifixion, may Lord, we, we, not, we don't shy away from that. That uh, we are with you on that journey and we recognise that, that the pain that you suffered is uh, because of what we've done. So we bring to you um, those things, the, the failings, the way that we have failed to live a life uh, that is of your calling. We lift them up to you, Lord. And Lord, have mercy on us. Strengthen us for the journey ahead as we relive your suffering and death, that we might stay beside you right until the end. Amen. Friends, there is good news. When we confess our wayward and sinful ways, God in his infinite mercy forgives us and embraces us with love. I can declare to you, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. We're going to hear again uh, the, uh, the wonderful timeless story of Jesus' uh, entry into uh, Jerusalem. And I invite you uh, to, perhaps if you want to read this story itself, uh, as recorded in scripture, that you can open up to your Bibles at John 12, 12 to 19 and read that. But for this morning, I'm going to invite Judy to come and read us the story as told perhaps from a child's point of view. It's uh, sometimes nice to consider the story. Where, where would we have been in this story? How would we have felt if we had been there uh, as part of the crowd waving our branches? What was it actually like to be there? We're going to hear the story told as perhaps from a child's point of view. So sit back, kids, if you're there, sit back uh, uh, next to mum and dad and listen to the story as it comes to us. And Judy is going to bring us this wonderful uh, imagined story of that Palm Sunday. Let's listen to it. Rebecca and Simon were helping their mother unpack the special food she'd brought at the market for their Passover meal later in the week. The fruit and nuts smelt delicious and the children could hardly wait for Thursday night to come. Suddenly, their dad stood up and hurried to the window what are those men doing with our donkey? He said, flinging open the door, he yelled out to the people outside. Who said you could untie that animal? Bring it back right now. Rebecca could just hear their reply. It's all right, the Lord needs it. You'll have your donkey back by the end of the day. The Lord, you mean Jesus of Nazareth? Is he in town again? Yes. He'll be in Jerusalem for Passover. He's going up there now just to look, have a look around. Hmm, well, okay, take the donkey, of course, but tell Jesus to be gentle with her. She's never been ridden before. Can you imagine Jesus doing her any harm? Laughed the man. See you later. Simon and Rebecca looked at each other. They'd heard amazing stories about Jesus of Nazareth but they'd never seen him for real. Can we go? Simon asked breathlessly. What, with the donkey? said their mother. Yes, I suppose so. If we trust Jesus with her, I guess we can trust him with you. Hurry up then, they'll be gone. The children skipped out of the house and ran to catch up with the two men was a bit of a walk up the hill to where Jesus himself was waiting on the Mount of Olives. Simon and Rebecca hung back when they saw him, feeling shy. But Jesus said, you've brought some friends then, Philip, and held out his hands to them. Before long, the children felt as if they'd known him forever. They watched as Jesus stroked their donkey's head and sat carefully on her back. Then the whole party, Jesus on the donkey, his 12 disciples, Simon and Rebecca, 
set off down the other side of the hill towards Jerusalem. As they walked down the stony road, more children caught sight of the little procession and ran to join it. A few grown-ups came up over to see what the children were doing, and when they saw Jesus, they tagged onto the group as well. By the time they reached the valley and started climbing yet another hill, crowds of people were starting to gather by the side of the road. Suddenly, Simon heard someone call out, The prophecy! Remember the prophecy! Our king is coming to us riding on a donkey. He's the king, the son of David. At once a great shout went up, Hosanna to the son of David, Hosanna to the king of kings. People reached up to the tall palm trees round about and ripped off whole branches, waving them in the air as they sang praise to God. Others threw their coats on the ground to make a soft carpet for the little donkey to walk on. And everyone was dancing and cheering. Rebecca loved parties, and she didn't want this one ever to end. But then she looked up and gasped as she caught a first sight of the great city of Jerusalem, its whitewashed buildings shining in the sunlight. Wow, I never realised how beautiful it is, she whispered. At last, they were at the gate to the city. Jesus climbed down from the donkey and handed her back to Simon. Thank your parents for lending her to me, he said. Rebecca pulled on his sleeve. Are you really going to be our king, she whispered. Jesus put his hand on her head and smiled. One day, very soon, he said, and walked through the gate into the jostling crowd. Wasn't that a wonderful retelling of the story? Uh, and opens us up to uh, imagine a little bit about what it would have been like there. Now, I did encourage you to get uh, your palms to, to bring along. So if you've got them there, um, bring them out now, uh, because we're going to encourage you to uh, join with us in actually making a palm cross, if you would like to try that. This is what a palm cross looks like. Palm Sunday is not just about getting caught up in, in all of the, the joy and the excitement of, of that first parade, as we'll talk about in a moment, but the fact that it was the beginning, really, of Christ's uh, journey, ultimately, to the cross. And so to actually take the palm branches and to create a cross brings a merging of the two stories together. So uh, if you've got a, um, a, a palm there, break off one of the... Um, the, uh, the branches of it and we're going to show you a video now that will show you how you can make one of these palm crosses. Uh, you may not be able to get through it all while you're watching the video but uh, we will put the instructions up on uh, our website and we emailed it out to a lot of people as well. But here's an opportunity to learn how to make one of these palm crosses. Let's watch the video. Making our palm crosses. Firstly, gather your palm leaf blade. Gently tear, snap or cut a suitably flexible palm blade from the palm stalk. Tear your working strip away from the centre vein. This will make it a lot softer and pliable. Slide your nail or something sharp down close to the, blade, the vein and pull it away. You'll only need one half to work with. Here's how to do it. Start with the first fold about a third of the way along your palm leaf blade. First, hold the palm branch in your hand. The direction is across your body, not up and down. Fold the right end, A, of the blade towards yourself and then upwards at a 90 degree angle to form a right angle and then crease. Now fold that same blade A down behind, finishing level with the other blade B and crease. 
Continue folding the same blade again, this time around in front, coming up, finishing with the end A facing upwards, crease. You are finished with A for the moment. Take the blade on the left, B, and fold it towards yourself, going to the right, over the front, and crease when level with the other workings. Continue with blade B and loop the end behind the workings. Do not crease. At the back of the workings you will see a pocket made by A's first fold. Feed the end of B through the back fold pocket until it comes out the other side. Pull it all the way through. Gently tug until it's locked in position and crease. It will look like an L in reverse. Go back to blade A, the top one. Loop the end towards yourself and feed it through the front pocket fold, but only go as far as your desired length for the top of the cross, about a third of the finished length. Do not crease. You've just made the top of your cross. Flip your cross over so that blade B is now on the right side. Take the end of blade B and loop it towards you and in through the front pocket fold. Pull it until it reaches about the same length as the head of the cross that you previously made with blade A. Flip the cross once more. Lastly, you'll take the end of blade B and loop it towards you and feed it back along itself until it appears inside the other cross arm loop. Ease it along until its loop is about the same length as the other two parts. Cut any excess length off, tucking in the end to square it up. Trim the base to the proportions that you require, but only if needed. Your palm cross is now complete and ready for our Easter service. So how did you go? Did you manage? It might have been a little bit fast for you to follow on in that time. Uh, but as I said, uh, we'll put it up on the, the website and you can create some more. If you've got yours, now's the time to wave them around. Otherwise, pick up your palm branch again as we're going to sing together. All glory, Lord, and honour. Let's uh, sing this wonderful song about Palm Sunday.
sure you're familiar with a saying that says, everyone loves a parade. I don't know where this saying uh, originated from. I went looking for it, thinking maybe it was uh, someone like P.T. Barnum or maybe the, uh, the lyrics out of a musical. Uh, but nobody seems to know where it came from. But it's true, everyone loves a parade. There's something captivating about parades. The excitement, the crowds, the anticipation, just this, the sheer thrill of being among people who all have that same purpose. I must admit, I'm not one for crowds. Uh, but when you get to a parade, when you, when you get there and you find yourself amongst uh, that excitement, there is something that, that draws you along with the crowd around you. Perhaps that is why so many of us look forward to Palm Sunday every year. Happy songs and loud hosannas, palm branches and maybe our own parade into church. We love the movement. We love the noise and, and all the actions. And even fairly reserved uh, churches come alive. And maybe for the uh, only time during the year, there are hands raised. There's a clapping and even dancing in the aisles. Dare I say it, there is something contagious about the excitement of Palm Sunday. It's not a word I like to um, use at the moment, is it? But um, pun intended. Even if we don't understand everything that's going on, we like the fact that a lot is happening. However, if you were able to spin this camera around, I could show you none of that is happening in the church this year. The doors are shut. Musical instruments lie silent. Candles uh, are unlit. This may come to you as, as a surprise to you, but uh, this is not a live broadcast. We're recording today on Saturday and drawing in information and other parts to put together to broadcast uh, to you this morning. But I can assure you, Sunday morning, this place is going to be quiet, the car park empty, and so are the pews. Our church buildings today are all, are all silent right across the nation and most of the world, except for small worship teams who may be still working to stream their service. One might be um, forgiven for saying, has Palm Sunday been cancelled? I find it a bit uh, ironic lately that if you switch your TV on at night, you can watch a show called Bondi Rescue. You know, you might have seen that, a, a show that's, that's filmed at Bondi Beach with the, um, the surf lifesavers and it pans around the beach and there's thousands of people there and they're sunbathing and they're swimming and they're surfing and there's laughter and running and, and, um, and yet the reality is that if you were to look at Bondi Beach, it is completely empty. It has been cut off. There are nobody there at the moment. And in reality, Bondi Beach is like our church buildings, quiet, deserted, gloomy. And the coronavirus is having the same effect on people's lives, which is why we need to celebrate Palm Sunday. Just because our church buildings are quiet does not mean the church itself is quiet. Even though there is nobody in the buildings, we as a church, and the true church is the people of God, can still lift up our voices in praise and, and in recognition that Jesus is King. The show must go on and does go on. The coronavirus is, is, uh, has not really changed anything because the Jesus who entered in Jerusalem over 2,000 years ago hailed as King is still indeed King. And even though Christian communities cannot physically gather together, this does not present, prevent us from declaring in one voice, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We're told in Luke's version of the Palm Sunday story that the Pharisees tried to stop the parade and asking Jesus to uh, rebuke his disciples. But Jesus said, I tell you, if they keep quiet, even the stones will cry out. And this is still true. Though it seems the coronavirus uh, is, seems intent on silencing the cries of modern day disciples, the fact is that even if the church were to remain silent, creation itself would cry out in witness to the reality that Jesus is King. So from our homes, from our lounge rooms, 
We are joining with the rest of creation in proclaiming Jesus is King. However, maybe in the silence that is still prevalent, maybe this is an opportunity to look past the noise and the traditions of our usual Palm Sunday to see what is really happening in this story. It's so easy to get caught up in the parade, like all the onlookers that day, that we fail to see the reality of the situation. Jesus was welcomed like a celebrity, a conquering hero. In modern day times, we might uh, throw a parade for uh, returning uh, athletes from the Olympic Games uh, or uh, for uh, celebrities. He was cheered on as they welcomed him as king. But Jesus knew what lay ahead. I wonder what was actually going through his mind as he entered into Jerusalem riding on that donkey. He certainly knew what lay ahead. He knew that the joy of this day would very quickly change to sadness. The cries of laughter and admiration would be silenced or worse, replaced with shouts of anger and crucify him. The exhilaration of Palm Sunday would be forgotten in the horror of what we now call Christ's passion. The betrayal, the suffering, the humiliation, the torture and his ultimate execution. The deafening silence of Jesus' followers during this time, standing in stark contrast to their cries of Hosanna less than a week before. The truth is that many of us do not like unhappy endings. We avoid pain and sadness. We would probably prefer to jump from Palm Sunday directly through to Easter Sunday and miss what lies in between. We would rather linger in the delighted crowd of Palm Sunday rather than step too quickly into the passion narrative. But Palm Sunday cannot be removed from the rest of the story. Just as Jesus needed to enter into the Holy Week, into Jerusalem, I should say, we also need to enter into Holy Week, not lingering too long, but as we walk along Jesus, with our cries of Hosanna, we must realise that our songs of praise and adoration, our cries of Hosanna, will very quickly give way to our own betrayal of Jesus. Then inevitably, our cries of praise will fail as we uh, bow to temptation, that we reject Christ by our rejection of others, by bowing to temptations instead of bowing to Christ's throne. Everyone loves a parade, but life also has its moments of passion that cut us to the core. Yet our lives are not a continuous cycle of hosannas and shouts of crucify him, because the cross was not the end of the story. The final days of hallelujah, he is risen. Of the ultimate cry, the cross was not the end of the story. And for that reason, we can live with hope. So in the quietness of today in our homes, perhaps it seems more like Good Friday than Palm Sunday. But the good thing about Good Friday is that Easter is only a breath away. And with that is the reminder that although Jesus did go to the cross, he rose from the grave. Perhaps a good analogy for what we are doing at the moment. Perhaps as we sit in our homes, it feels like Good Friday the darkness, the solitude. But the promise of Easter also is the promise that this isolation, everything that we are going through, will soon give way to the light of a, a dawning new age as we come through, just like the dawning of the sun on Easter morning. Palm Sunday is not about remembering the Jesus that was King entering into Jerusalem so long ago but celebrating that Jesus still is King. 
It is not about Jesus entering Jerusalem so long ago, but how Jesus enters into our lives still today. And that is something worth shouting about. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to let any stone out shout me. So let us continue to worship. Let us continue to sing praises. Let's continue to sing our hosannas today as we celebrate Palm Sunday and to celebrate, indeed, what Christ has won for each one of us. While we focus on the parade and the festivities of life uh, this Sunday, allow it to also prepare us for the passion and the way in which that man, Jesus, can and will change our lives if we are open to it. His, his passion will change us forever if we let it. Are you ready for Easter? Are you ready for Christ through his spirit to uh, bring about a renewal in you as you reflect, as you walk with him on the journey to the cross and ultimately to rise with him again on Easter Sunday? May this Easter journey that starts today be a season of refreshment and rediscovery of the new life we have through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Redeemer and our King. Hallelujah, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen.
let us now turn uh, our thoughts and prayers to the people around us and I'm going to um, uh, hand over to uh, Ron Storr to bring our prayers for others. Let us pray for the world, the church, and ourselves. Let us pray. Jesus, when you came into Jerusalem, you came not as a conquering, oppressive emperor riding on a horse, but humbly as a prince of peace, bringing liberation, riding on a donkey. We pray especially today for an end to violence, oppression and war, we yearn for your peace to reign. Be with all world leaders who seek peace and for all peoples who have been displaced by war or oppression. Lead us in ways of compassion and action to bring them justice. Lord, hear us. People welcomed you as you rode into Jerusalem, but the chief priests plotted your death. Jesus, we pray that your church today may truly reflect your great love and be free of legalism, discord and division. Let us go as a church on a pilgrimage, travelling wherever you lead us. We pray for all leaders of churches and whoever ministers in your name. We pray for our own church, for Graham, our pastor, and for each and every member. Lord, hear us. People welcomed you as you rode into Jerusalem, and although you came bringing heal, healing and release to the captive, you were betrayed and deserted by those close to you. We pray today for those feeling betrayal because of the actions of others, of organisations or even your church. We pray for the coming of your kingdom where homelessness, poverty, disease and hunger will be vanquished. Be with all who serve the vulnerable and sick and be with us as we seek to be your hands and feet in our broken world. As we enter into the days ahead of us, we will need your power and presence to sustain us as we move through these difficult times together. <clears throat> Spirit of love and life, stay close. Quell any unrealistic expectations, but open us to the possibility of hope and allow us to glimpse the goodness of your purpose for us. Lord, hear us. We continue to pray for our world and people everywhere as we respond to the impact of the coronavirus. <clears throat> May we know that God is present as a helper and as a redeemer of his people. Father, we know that you are always within reach and never far away. We know that you are close and you are with us. We know that you care, that you do heal, and you will restore us. Amen. And so we pray as Jesus taught us, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. One last opportunity now as we uh, draw towards the uh, end of our worship time today. One last time to grab your branches as we sing together, Ride on, ride on in majesty. As we uh, remember Christ riding into Jerusalem that day, but also um, pointing us to what uh, the, the real reality of what that parade that day was all about. Let's sing, Ride on, ride on in majesty. joining us in uh, worship today as we enter into um, Holy Week. I hope that you can join us. Uh, we've got a few opportunities for you to, to share with us. Uh, we will be having a Maundy Thursday service. The uh, information about that has been emailed out and we'll also put it on our website. So that's uh, Thursday night, uh, an interactive uh, opportunity to, to share uh, uh, around the Lord's table. Uh, and remember the events of the evening before uh, Christ's uh, uh, betrayal and, uh, and the uh, events of Easter. Um, there's also our Good Friday service uh, and we've also sent you out some information about that. That also will be an interactive service to allow you, even at home, to be involved in it. Uh, so on uh, the information that you'll find emailed out or on the website, a small list of things for you to get together. Uh, so things like a, a stone, a blank piece of paper, uh, a, a bit of a, a plant like a bougainvillea or something that's got thorns in it to remind us of, the, uh, uh, of Christ's uh, crown of thorns, uh, a bowl with coins in it. You'll find the full list anyway. Uh, grab those together so that you as a family uh, or just even by yourself, if you uh, want to really immerse yourself in the events of Good Friday to, to join in with us uh, in a very special uh, and reflective and thoughtful uh, and challenging uh, Good Friday service. And then of course join us on uh, Easter, uh, Easter Sunday morning at the usual time of nine o'clock for our Easter celebration as we do come and remember that Christ has risen. For our open house people there will be also um, a, an open house uh, Easter Sunday service in the afternoon where you can join in, uh, in an interactive uh, Zoom service. So lots of options to enable us not only to celebrate our Easter, but to do it even from our homes in a way that we can interact with other, each other in our prayers and in our sharing. Uh, but I also encourage you to ring one another. 
share some of the insights that you've received from your study from uh, perhaps our services uh, so that we can grow together in our faith. Let us uh, close now. I thank you again for joining us in worship and I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. Sisters and brothers, Palm Sunday is only part of the story. This week we will follow the crowds as it leads to the cross. We cannot lose hope because it will lead to Jesus' resurrection. God will travel with us. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless.